Yeah, good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shirish, and uh, I work as a senior director of engineering at Impetus. And today, you know, as Ron said, uh, I'm here to cover uh, you know, how enterprises can maximize their cloud investment in the digital journey. Now, in the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to cover, you know, the current state of enterprises that we see for our customers. Uh, talk about some of the cloud and data cost challenges that we have been seeing. Uh, the cost engineering approach that we have been successful with with many Fortune uh, 100 companies in last uh, many years. Summary of some of the best practices that we have seen has worked well uh, for us. Followed by a success story. Uh, and towards the end, I do want to cover an enabler that uh, we have developed. As Ron said, we are more of a services company, but we do have an enabler which accelerates the uh, cloud cost optimization. We'll take a slide on that to just give you a glimpse of it. Now, before I you know, go deeper into topic, I just wanted to introduce uh, about impetus to everyone here who might not be aware. So we are... Uh, you know, headquartered at uh, Los Gatos, California. We got incorporated in 1996. So we have around like two decades of experience uh, with, you know, relationship with customers. We work with almost like 20 plus Fortune 100 customers. We have a strong capability on cloud and data engineering. We have spun around five product companies uh, in last 15 years uh, with a growth rate of 25% uh, year on year. We have global presence, a majority of our offices in US and India uh, with close to around 3000 employees. And, and we have been awarded and recognized by industry as you can see on the screen, uh, you know, and then among these uh, one of being, you know, top 25 great places to work in India in tech space. With that said, you know, let me uh, start uh, sharing about our experiences on what kind of challenges that we are seeing with customers, right? Uh, in, in their digital innovation journey, as, as most of our work is, you know, warehouse migration or modernization of uh, data lakes or uh, migrating to cloud environments, right? So implementing any digital innovation, you know, often requires a significant upfront investment in technology talent as well as an infrastructure and then balancing this initial cost uh, you know while we ensure a long term benefit uh, can be challenging now especially for uh, smaller organizations with limited resources and even with large organizations we've seen you know they get into vendor lock in uh, making it difficult for them to you know either switch providers or or change technologies right uh, the digital, the digital landscape you know evolves quickly and keeping up with the pace uh, and deciding when to adopt new technologies is another challenge that uh, we are seeing where you know overspending is always in uh, thought right that should i spend or i should hold and and moreover you know attracting and retaining top talent uh, you know for this innovation projects uh, can be costly and can impact your budgets many customers that we have seen they struggle with you know integration of their uh, legacy systems uh, with the newer technologies or retrofitting or replacing outdated uh, you know systems uh, can be expensive and time consuming and making it uh, really challenging to create that bal fine balance right between innovation and maintaining uh, operational continuity most of the time, you know, customers' cloud costs are tracked by a central finance team or in some cases IT teams. Now, these teams are far off from the actual usage of cloud resources. And on the other side, the engineering teams responsible for provisioning these resources do not have a clue on how their actions are translating into cloud cost. You know, there are there's no central place to get this visibility and with, you know, hundreds of instances, you know, buckets, volumes, clusters running, it's difficult to know who is using and how long these have been running. And all of this adds up to the cost. Now, 
you know, most of these digital innovation projects rely on large amount of data and the cost associated with ingesting the data, storing the data, processing the data, analyzing this data, and this can be substantial. Now, optimizing data management strategies uh, to minimize cost while you know, maximizing insights is a continuous challenge. You know, further, uh, you know, we spoke about in the pre previous sessions, you know, compliance and security, right, for these projects can be really critical. Now, implementing cybersecurity measures and complying to evolving regulations can add to overall cost. Lastly, uh, again, most common challenge that uh, we have seen is, uh, you know, cost optimization is always considered as an afterthought. It is, it's mostly reactive. And by the time you realize that you have lost a good amount of dollars, you know, it's too late. So these are some of the challenges that, uh, you know, we have seen. And, and now let me take you through an approach, right, that uh, we have tried with many of our customers to address some of these challenges. As you can see on this diagram, we have, uh, you know, on the left side, we have all the challenges that we just spoke about. We follow a three-step approach of assess, manage, and innovate to help us get outcomes which are efficient. In the first phase, you know, we look at the, you know, current spend. We assess the environment. If it's a data lake, we look at the workloads. We look at the patterns. We look at low-hanging optimization opportunities and just fix it there itself. Once you go to the managed phase, we look at uh, slice and dice of the data. We start looking at, uh, you know, deep dive into insights on what's happening. We also look at uh, the, you know, tags, trying to set up showbacks or chargebacks uh, to, to the divisions or to the customers or to the users so that we are able to uh, get visibility. We set up rules, alerts, to have your budgets and guardrails around how much that we could spend on a month or a year or a quarter, right? And of course, the you know a lot of automation that we could do to eliminate the wastage or to minimize the resource wastage. And once you are able to manage it, I think the last phase that we get into is uh, innovate, where uh, we really accelerate the cost optimization by you know, one of these enabler that we have developed, uh, we call it as cloud cost optimizer, CCO, and that helps us in doing, you know, proactive recommendations. It has AI-based uh, features to detect anomalies, uh, near real-time anomalies, and it supports multiple cloud. I'll talk about this later uh, in the deck. And then, of course, the uh, shift left approach for cost management that we believe is it just not you know, being reactive uh, in the in the cloud engineering approach, you need to start thinking that the moment you spun a resource that uh, whether this has been effective or did I lose cost as you go forward. So we, we start, you know, looking at shift left approach where we uh, start looking at cost savings much early in the cycle. Now, uh, you know, I... I with, with experiences on many of our customers uh, and and going through this approach, which I just spoke about, uh, you know, th there, there are some lot of best practices that we have tried capturing on this slide. There can be many more. This, these are some significant ones which I wanted to share here with the uh, participants. The first one is a shift left mindset. I think, I think I just covered that in the earlier slide where, you know, you start looking at cost optimization as early as possible so that cost cannot be an afterthought, you know, and then we look at cost element proactively right at the development itself. We can optimize resources during development cycle, you know, coming up with right sizing. Now, this may take iterations and we may be, you know, uh, we, we can extend, we can enable extended monitoring to begin with, uh, to right size, and then later we can switch back to basic monitoring. We can choose between serverless services, transient resources, reserved instances, right, based on the usage. In case you're looking for a long running resource, you know, I think you know that you can consider saving plans that can help you save 30 to 40% of the costs. In case you're not sure how much time it will take, and if it is ran random in nature, you can enable auto scaling to optimize your costs. 
we can design you know automated flows to spin up resources and then terminate as needed uh, the process of onboarding the whole end to end flow right right from application to platform resources to spinning up infrastructure uh, should be automated now this not only helps in accelerating the delivery time it also helps in uh, in reducing the costs as i said tagging can also help identify the stale resources you know it, it helps us show back on who is using it also to charge back to you know uh, resources uh, from you know different business units it provides summary of cost by various teams or groups and becomes an inspiration which we have seen in many examples or customer examples for other teams for cost optimization the basic anomalies uh, can be detected by setting up billing alerts on a monthly or even on a daily basis uh, we can also use native and third party solutions to determine you know almost like real time or near real time anomalies to save unnecessary cost now if you look at warehouse migration to cloud right which we have been doing a lot for many of our customer it makes things more complex enterprises are looking for single source of truth for their data at scale and that too with speed for you know accurate decision making now these migrations on cloud you know, usually starts from you know your ingestion process to cleansing of data to transformation and then finally analytics on top of it and and a recommendation is that we should spend more time on understanding the underlying end to end use case whether it's batch or a real time process now you can choose between a managed service or a serverless service for cost optimization if the data is you know incremental and consistent you can go for a managed service however if it is random in nature you can choose a serverless option to save the cost uh, there should be a data pipeline observability dashboard uh, that helps us in proactive monitoring now again many times we have seen you know these pipelines would get stuck or there will be failures and the underlying resources will keep up uh, they they keep running right and they 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 taken up a lot of cost we we should set up rules for idle and wrong running instances to identify such uh, cases and take actions and as we heard right earlier in the aws session you know you know a lot of providers are coming up with storage and compute separately now and we should use them appropriately so that we can optimize them as we as we move forward as i said there are many more best practices in context of time i wanted to just cover uh, some of these uh, which are useful which we have seen uh, almost in most of our engagements uh, that uh, one can apply now i wanted to cover a success story uh, for one of our customer now this customer is a large uh, retail uh, service provider in the united states and he started working with them last year where uh, they had a business need to move their legacy terra data platform to snowflake on azure and they wanted to do it in a cost effective way so not only we help them move uh, maybe close to around 3000 etl jobs that they have on terra data uh, to snowflake we snow sequel we converted all of that to snow sequel uh in a, in a in a uh, you know record time we also started looking at their costs on the data warehouse so we created the snowflake dashboards for them for effective performance monitoring we started looking at compute heavy you know etl jobs on a week to week basis right and 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 see that how can we optimize these jobs you know how can we optimize those queries to get to a number where it should meet the slas and it should also help us improve the cost what we have been seeing last 6 i think 6 months 7 months now we are meeting 100% of percentage of our slas we are able to save around 45000 month over month uh, for them for their batch processing for their etl jobs on a warehouse uh they do have a reporting solution with uh, micro strategy where uh, you know their analytics warehouse was also tuned up by optimizing the 
you know, the queries on the reporting side that help us save around 13,000, close to $13,000 a month. Now, optimizing these jobs and queries helped us improve the performance of both the reports as well as the jobs. That was a side, uh, you know, gain that we got. But not only this, I think, uh, as I said, this really large and retail customer has, uh, you know, seasonal peaks. And typically, you know, in November and December, during Thanksgiving, you know, Cyber Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas holidays, they had those peaks which came in. And that also we handled by monitoring the warehouse resources. So some of these snowflake clusters, uh, they were using Excel, some were using L type of instances where we looked at that carefully, we planned it, we look at certain batches which can easily go for L, certain batches can go for even a smaller one. And we did optimize the warehouse cost to around like $4,000 a month. Not only that, we were able to manage these, uh, you know, holiday period where on some of these days, their sales were like 10 times of a usual day. And, and we were still within SLA, we were able to manage it with an optimum cost. I mean, this next slide talks about uh, some of the data points that I have for this case study. So if you look at the bottom side of it, uh, you know, maybe a couple of weeks ago, uh, it, it talks about the you know jobs uh, that we have plotted here uh, before optimization and after optimization. So before they were taking like maybe close to 30 minutes to compute heavy jobs and after optimization, they went all below five minutes. And on the top graph, you can see that from last six, seven months, we were able to save right from like around $28,000 a month to $45 a month, $40,000 a month uh, for them. And this is which, which is around close to half a million dollars uh, on a analyzed, right? If you, if you really look at it. And this is where you are going, right? We With this money that we are saving, we are to add, we are able to add new use cases. We are able to add, uh, you know, new customers. They, they are able to serve new customers and, and build within the same budgets that they have. That's the advantage that we are seeing with these cost savings. Now, uh, you know, I just want to take, uh, you know, a couple of minutes on the enabler that we have developed, which is, uh, as I said, we call it as a cloud cost optimizer. Now, this helps us in giving us a unified assessment uh, monitoring and optimization solution for, for your needs, right? Now, if you look at the screen, uh, it's a quick view of how does it look like. You know, uh, we support for AWS, Azure, and GCP. Uh, we have a pseudo support for Snowflake and Databricks at this point of time. Of course, we have capabilities to do optimizations on data platforms and these cloud providers. We fetch data from all of these providers, put it into an analysis engine in the center, and that engine helps us slice and dice this data and give us visibility, uh, give us proactive recommendations. It helps us setting up notifications, uh, you know, forecasting for your future needs that helps in your budgeting. And of course, governing, you know, governess with the operational best practices, so bringing in operational excellence. So, and, and the solution is, you know, offered in both the modes. I mean, either you can use a SaaS version of it, or you can get it, uh, you know, deployed within your own environment. Right. And and we we have seen this right uh, using this solution, and we, you know, using our capabilities with uh, so many customers. Uh, you know, we were able to reduce the cloud cost or data cost for customers up to 40%. We were able to find, you know, uh, bottlenecks uh, very quickly, 50% faster identification, right? We, if I look at, uh, you know, chargeback and the forecasting feature, which brings in the FinOps maturity, in the way that we are solving the, uh, you know, cost uh, efficiency uh, challenges. Uh, with the kind of dashboard, unified dashboard that we have, uh, we can have it for finance teams, we can have it for development teams, we can have it for managers, we can have it for 
executives. So that gives a proactive means for a developer also to see that if he has spun anything, he's able to just uh, control that, right? And then features like, you know, anomaly detection or, you know, alerting or proactive recommendations. Now these cloud cost intelligence features bring in, you know, really profitable growth. And then, as I said, we collect data from these cloud providers uh, and, and, you know, do a slice and dice, which helps us generate unit economics on services, on regions, on for departments, for users, and then deliver value uh, throughout the world. Because of our time today, I'm, I'm not able to demo this uh, solution, but uh, do feel free to reach out uh, to us if you want to really see how it works or if you want to get in touch and understand how we have solved uh, cost uh, optimization challenges for our customers. We do have, by the way, uh, a $0 free assessment, uh, which runs for a seven to 10 days. Uh, if you really want to get this done, uh, feel free to reach out to us, uh, click on this link and uh, we should be able to help you out. I think that's all that I wanted to cover. Uh, you know, uh, let me know if anyone has any other, any questions that I can answer.